Today I'm going over the classic series trombone mouthpieces by Dennis Wick. Stay tuned. <laughs> What's going on guys, Aaron here, helping musicians get better, faster through performances, educational videos, and product reviews. And again, today I'm going over the classic series trombone mouthpieces. Now I'm going over the classic series, which is any trombone mouthpiece that looks like this. So if you're here looking for the Dennis Wick Heritage or maybe the Ultra series, we're not doing that in this video today. Now, before I get too far in the video, I wanna remind you that I do videos like this just about every single week. So if you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button for more videos just like this directly to you. So Dennis Wick, the company, is very well known for brass players in the mute world and in the mouthpiece world, but we tend to forget that Dennis Wick himself was actually a trombone player. Dennis Wick himself, as a trombone player, is actually a big name in the world. He played in the London Symphony Orchestra. He taught at the Goodhart School of Music. He was president of the International Trombone Association. I mean, if you've seen Star Wars, you've heard Dennis Wick's playing. And so because of how prolific he was, it's no stretch to imagine how important his mouthpieces and his products have become in some circles of the brass world. So if you're somebody looking for a mouthpiece for either trombone or euphonium, you've probably stumbled across Dennis Wick in your search. So let me first talk about the one that I have right here right now is this is the Dennis Wick 4AL. Now, the Dennis Wick 4AL has a cup size of 26 millimeters, a rim size of 6.72 millimeters, bore size of 7.38, and it's described as having a barrel back bore. And the one you see here has a gold rim and a satin silver finish, though most of the time when you look for these mouthpieces, anywhere that sells Dennis Wick, you'll typically find it in a all silver or all gold finish. Now, some of you, all those numbers and specs and everything made a lot of sense, but some of you are a little confused. What are all these numbers and letters that you're throwing at me? You know, what does 4AL actually mean? Well, that's just the way that a lot of mouthpiece companies will describe their mouthpiece because they make so many. I'll put a link in the description down below to the Dennis Wick website that has a drop down menu of all the various different mouthpieces with all of their sizes and all their descriptions. And there's also a mouthpiece comparison chart that I will also link in the description down below. But when you're going to check it out, here are some things that you just need to know to be able to find one that might work for you you. So first off, let's talk about the number. It's not like this with all companies, but with Dennis Wick, the bigger the number, the smaller the mouthpiece and vice versa. So for instance, a 0AL is much bigger than a 4AL. And a lot of times the number for some companies only means the rim size, but with Dennis Wick, it just kind of means a gradual increase in size. However, that too can change depending on the letters that precede the number. You'll see letters like AL, BL, BS, things like that, and that will change. And if you look in the description, it will tell you what the difference is between let's say a BL and a BS. Sometimes it's something like the shank size, and sometimes it's something with how the bore is made. I can't really go through the description on all of them, but just know that those are options that are available to you with Dennis Wick mouthpieces. Another thing that you'll see in the description are back bore shapes. You'll see like barrel and V type shape and medium. You'll see these types of shapes being discussed. Just look and make sure you know what they're talking about. They're just descriptions. They're not necessarily general sizes or any specifications. They're just descriptions on what the back bore looks like. And if you're confused about what all of these parts are in my how to pick a mouthpiece video, I go through all the parts of a mouthpiece to help you out. And then the last thing you might want to consider, they don't have it in all sizes, but Dennis Wick does make a heavy top option, which adds some brass to the mouthpiece. Dennis Wick describes the heavy top as being able to be more powerful and also having more control of certain registers. Um, though it's not the one I use, I do see people who use heavy top mouthpieces on a regular basis. Even though the heavy top is not something that you see here, it's not something that I have, I do suggest looking into it when you're looking at these mouthpieces. And when we're talking about pricing, I always describe Dennis Wick as being a very competitive price. And that's not just with their mouthpieces, it's with almost anything they make. They always have a price that's never gonna be the most expensive, but it's also not gonna be the most cheap either. You're always getting a very fair and competitive price for instance, for the mouthpiece that I have here on Amazon for all silver, the 4AL goes for about $75, whereas the all gold goes for 118. Now that price difference might seem like a lot going from just silver to gold, but I noticed that that difference in some mouthpiece companies can be upwards of 100 to $150. So again, you know, you're gonna pay for what you get, 
but it is a very fair price. And remember, a mouthpiece, if you take care of it, should last you from about five to 10 years. So consider it an investment in your playing. For me, this has been the mouthpiece I've gone to for the past three or four years. If I'm playing trombone, typically I'm playing on this mouthpiece. I use it in my lessons, I use it when I do solos, when I play in quintets or quartets. I used it in brass band, I've used it in wind band. It's just kind of a very good, my everything mouthpiece. And in my teaching with my students, the classic series is always where I go to first. Not all of my students play a Dennis Wick, but a good handful of them do. Now they don't all play the 4AL, they'll I have some on the three, I have some on the four, I have some on the five, I have some on a heavy top. Like it's very situational because we're all built differently, but this is kind of my first stop for most of my students. And funny enough, the 4AL specifically is labeled as a classic large bore trombone mouthpiece as well as a classic euphonium style mouthpiece. So it's no surprise that me being a euphonium player would gravitate towards this particular size mouthpiece mouthpiece. So I highly suggest checking out the classic style mouthpiece, not only if you're a trombone player, but also if you're a doubler, if you're a trombone player who plays euphonium sometimes, or a euphonium player who plays trombone on a regular basis, which many of us do, I highly suggest it. Um, I don't suggest it for marching band playing necessarily, um, but for just about everything else, it's worked really well for me and my students. So I highly suggest if you're on a mouthpiece search, checking out these mouthpieces. And you know, I always suggest trying them out first before you buy, but if you are looking to snag one of these for yourself, I have links in the description down below. But that's all I've got on this mouthpiece, guys. It's a great mouthpiece, but that does lead me to my question of the day, and that is, what size mouthpiece are you playing with? I tend to play with kind of a middle of the road, slightly larger mouthpiece, but I know some of you guys like playing on toilet bowls, and I know some of you like playing on almost trumpet mouthpieces on your trombone. Let me know in the description down below. But yeah guys, that's all I've got for this video. If you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, again, consider hitting that subscribe button and that notification bell to be notified of when I upload new videos. And if you really like what I'm doing here and you want more and you wanna help us out monetarily, I highly suggest checking out my Patreon. Links are in the description down below on how you can become a Patreon patron. But again, that's all I've got for you guys. My name is Aaron, reminding you to be happy, but never satisfied. I'll see you next time.